Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trufin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Fallout 4, the gunless playthrough. Here's Bob again. Bob here in, uh, well, the foggy afternoon of Sanctuary Hills, and we're right next to, uh, well, I made a Pip Boy statue here because I th thought that would make a uh, very, very funny intro. So there we go. So Bob right next to his little buddy over here giving a very nice thumbs up. Um, last time I forgot to actually level up and in the meantime I've done a, a bit of crafting as you can see and um, that actually gave me another level up because we were pretty close to leveling up again. So let's do that first. So level 10, we have two more perks we can choose now. Level 10 unlocks a uh, Demolition Expert 2. So now we get an extra 25% damage on our throwables and grenades actually gain a throwing arc. So that's a very, very cool perk that's gonna help us out enormously. There we go. And then I'm gonna actually go for one point in Charisma because that's gonna help us out because I wanna get a uh, Lone Wanderer eventually because that's uh, an increase to our carry weight by 50 and 15% less damage overall, which is one of the best perks in the game, to be honest. So uh, one point in Charisma it is. And with that done, I wanna kinda talk about what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna head to Lexington in a second and then we're gonna try to make our way to Diamond City and well, explore the surrounding areas uh, while we're on our way. So uh, let's head to Lexington right now. So back in Lexington. So last time we kind of skirted around the outside over there. We found the, our first Nuka-Cola Quantum in that building over there actually. And then skirted around the outside and entered Corvega through the tubes. We cleared that out completely aside from the roof, but that's not uh, that big of a problem. But there's actually a little town preceding Corvega that we never actually got the chance to look around in. Um, and Lexington is actually very interesting in a few ways because uh, first off it's where the Minutemen stopped before they actually went to Concord so that we might actually find out a bit more about that what happened over here and of course before that they went to Quincy but uh, let's just take a look around because there's also a red rocket station over here aside from an armor workbench there's not much to do here although is that yeah that's a weapon workbench and then a power armor station so we have kind of the basic workstations i don't think is there actually no i don't think this thing actually has its own workbench so we can't make this into a settlement but it's uh, a nice way where you can dump some resources if you're uh, overburdened the place is kind of crawling with ghouls as well because if i use vats i have a, a dormant feral ghoul over there and it's kind of creepy overall because you can see mannequins inside of the windows over there, which is really, really creepy. But first, oh, I'm going into caution. I think the ghouls are waking up, but I'm going to leave that for now because we want to go to the Super Duper Mart first. Uh, the Super Duper Mart is kind of a tradition in Fallout games because, uh, for example, in Fallout 3, it was kind of your first big uh, area that you could explore. Okay. That completely caught me off guard but uh, yeah edits avant on discovering super duper mart so very handy dump of uh, oil in this cabinet which might be handy if you're uh, really looking to craft some explosives but let's head into the super duper mart first so in fallout 3 um the super duper mart is actually your first big raider camp uh while in fallout 4 this place is actually infested with ghouls i can't really well you can see the corpses lying over here and uh, Corvega serves as your first introduction to raiders. Um, we're gonna have to be careful. They do carry quite a bit of ammo usually. And there's a Protectron. I could technically wake up, but I'm not going to. Um, just gotta be careful. So there's the first one that's probably... Ooh, military grade duct tape. Probably awake. Bam! Okay. So the biggest reason why I like to come here first time around is because there's a lot of interesting Nuka-Colas over here. And Nuka-Cola always has a, a really cool effect depending on what type of Nuka-Cola you're looking for. They're very interesting in survival as well because they keep you awake a bit longer, which is really cool. I'm detected for some reason. Doesn't seem like there's... Oh, yeah, okay, that's the first area where there's a few of them. Might actually be a good idea to show you the throwing arc. So Molotov cocktail equipped. If I now press R1, like I usually do for grenades, I actually see a nice throwing arc to where my grenade is gonna land. 
So let's put that over there. Okay, for some reason that other feral ghoul didn't get hit properly. But there he goes, swinging for the fences. And let's just go to hidden immediately again. Kick ball, it's a bit of rubber, don't really need that. And if you didn't go to 10 points bluff before, there's a quite a few uh, food items here as well that you can plant, like the gourds and the melons over here. Uh, and in survival, those are actually really good because they give you both uh, water and food. Yeah, okay, he's, he's, he's dead. He's confirmed dead. So most of the ghouls are actually dead, uh, which makes this a bit easier. Uh, don't forget the cash registers as well, because they can contain a bit of uh, pre-war money, which is very handy sometimes. And then over here, uh, behind the counter at the entrance, there's the terminal to uh, open up the servitor. But we're not gonna do that. And an advanced safe I can't unlock. So that one over there is still alive. Oh, they're awake. I think there's another one. Ow! Okay, he's in my back. Hi. Woo! There we go. Arm. Ooh, arm. Arm lost. They, he got a. He got a hidden. I didn't expect him to come from behind me. Where did he even come from? Must have crawled out from under. Uh, from between the boards here, over. Yeah, over here somewhere. A bit of drugs in the locked first aid kit. Ooh, another Nuka Cherry in the cafeteria. And Razor Grain. I can actually use all that. And I think, yeah, there's a Tales of a Junk Town Jerky Vendor in here as well. So permanently gain credit prices. I think we got one of those already. But uh, those all stack, so that's really good. So uh, in the back left corner from when you enter. Ooh, wine. Thank you, Bob. We'll really, really uh, enjoy that one in a second. More Nuka Cola Cherry and Nuka Cola. There we go. I think there's a few ghouls here as well. And I think this... Yeah, here we go. The Minutemen. So uh, this this uh, super duper marked was actually the previous place that the Minutemen took refuge in. But they got overrun by ghouls. This back area is also really handy for uh, drugs. And we get another laser musket that we can sell in a second. I think there's also... Okay, yeah, there, there's a ghoul over there. So I think he can't attack me as long as that animation is going. And then with Blitz, we teleport all over the place. There we go, I think that's both of them down. We got a bit of loot over there. So let's see, because I think we can actually find out a bit more about the Minutemen, but that might be in the basement. Because there's more ammo over here in the bathroom. The brackets are really shuffling, so I'm clearly not out of the woodworks yet, because I think there's... Must be at least one more ghoul still alive. Now I need to get behind, yeah, in storage over here. That's good. Oh, there's two ghouls awake in the in the shop that I completely. Wow, where where the hell did those guys come from? Oh god, there's one on the right. Oh, I actually got a sneak attack with the Molotov. That is interesting. And then goodbye. Oh, I didn't dump his head off. Where's the? Oh, yeah, that guy is on fire. Didn't he see me? There we go. He didn't see me at all. Still, still not out of caution, though. That's really close. Oh, that's in storage. They're behind the door. Luckily, that door is locked, I think. Yeah. Where the hell did these guys come from? There's clearly one over there. Yeah, 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 I can teleport inside. And then I think they're over that way. Might actually use third person. Yeah. There we go. Oh god. No, that was. Ooh, I'm actually really glad that I missed that first ghoul because I'm. Um, Jesus Christ. I don't want to be in third person when I'm doing that, because that, that looked horrible. Am I still? Yeah, okay. So I think I set the place on fire. <laughs> I completely whiffed on that uh, Molotov cocktail. No, can't I? No, okay, he saw me though. Oh god. Yeah. 
Okay, he, he died somewhere in between that. I'm gonna have to eat something. A bit of baked bloatfly, thank you very much. Kind of gave me a bit of uh, rad resistance as well. I'm gonna take the subway token. So how did I... I tossed the Molotov over here and that set off a chain reaction and... Yeah, there must have been oil on the floor. Okay, hi. I think that both must be stealth attacks. Yeah, sneak attack. Ow. Oh no. Goodbye. I think he lost... Did he lose his leg? Well, he did now. This seems to be more drugs. Oh god. That was horrible music. And that was a roamer. And I still one hit that guy. Okay. Don't mind me. Oh, would you look at that. In the offices, there's a, a teddy bear with handcuffs underneath a trash can. So he's he's kind of been... been the, the teddy bear is in jail. Look at that. That is, that is just silly. I love how, how Bethesda likes to play games with those uh, with skeletons and teddy bears. It's always skeletons and teddy bears. Office desk fan. And then we have a terminal with a kitty picture next to it. I do love this terminal. Due to numerous customer complaints over the past couple of months, it is with a heavy heart to inform you all that we had to let Sally go. You may have also noticed that the new espresso machine we ordered has arrived. Until we can make room in the kitchen, the espresso machine has been installed on top of Sally's desk. Enjoy! <laughs> so they fired her so they could put an espresso machine on top of her desk. That's basically it. And uh, then the, the second note states that they were going to have to move, uh, destroy a few walls if they want to make a space for the uh, espresso machine because it's too big. You can actually see it here because it's, it's, I think it's the, isn't it? Wait. Ah, there it is. There's the espresso machine. That's, look at how big this thing is. And yeah, it's, it's making ticking noises. And this, this was Sally's desk. We also have, for some reason, there's a chemistry station in the offices. Let's see if we can make a mine already. So yeah, we need a bit more fertilizer, but I can indeed make a bottle cap mine. We'll do that in a second, because I might actually find a bit of uh, fertilizer over here. And then we can also make another Molotov cocktail, so let's make that. A bit of uh, chemistry on the go, and let's continue exploring this place, because we still haven't found out what happened to the Minuteman over here. Look at this ghoul, he's sitting up straight. Nope, come on, hit it off. Nope, god damn it. This is making me look like a psycho, I'm just gonna stop doing that. So there's another area in the back here. Well, there's a few areas in the back here, because I think there's actually an underground tunnel as well, but we're gonna have to check that out in a second. But first, yeah, this area. None of these are alive. Ooh, Pro Snap Camera, that's a good source of uh, quality materials there. And a Braxo Cleaner Industrial Grade. Another one. That's really good. And then, of course, another Fusion Core. Thank you very much. I think that's the way to the underground garage over there, which we're gonna end with. But I think there's one more area over here with a few more ghouls. Yeah. Ooh, a Stalker. I am gonna use my Molotov Cocktail on that because I think there's a bit more oil on the floor there as well. Yeah, there we go. He's still alive, mind you. And he's gonna... Oh, that's another one. There we go. That's a feral ghoul. And that's... Oh, legendary feral ghoul roamer. Um, I'm just gonna critical you. Boom! Oh, wow. So that's our first legendary. So um, if you haven't played Fallout 4 before... Um, Legendaries are unique variants, well not unique variants, so stronger variants of enemies that actually have the possibility to gain a second health bar. So if you hit them, they have a chance to evolve and gain another uh, health bar. But each one is also guaranteed to carry a legendary piece of loot, which can be armor or weapons. And this one has a VATS enhanced raided chest piece. So... A rated chest piece with 10% reduction in action points in VATS. That's not terrible, actually. Might actually equip that right now. Although it does take the place of the pocketed boiled leather chest piece. So I get a bit more defense, but a lot less energy defense. Weight is pretty much the same, but I do lose... I think I lose 5 weight. Oh, 10 weight capacity. It's not that big of a problem right now, but at... Hmm. Let's let's run around with it. We'll switch to something else. So uh, that just looks like this. 
looks a bit haphazard, but uh, I don't really like raiding stuff. But uh, it is what it is. And now we have 10% uh, more, well, our, our actions in VATS cost 10% less action points, which is really, really good as our first legendary. There's still something alive. Okay, there's one, one of them creeping up on us. Okay, that was that. Was that. This door opens up as well. I'm going to check that out in a second because I think there's... There's a box here somewhere with, yeah, there we go. A trunk, a steamer trunk with loot and another minute man. We're going to read that in a second. Strengthen treated leather right arm and a calibrated hunting rifle. I'm going to take all that. And we get a bit of a better piece of gear right there on the right arm, which is really good. Then Josh's hollow tape. So I think if I just, can I... I'm gonna have to see that in a second. There we go. Slap it in there. Yesterday with Emma. Everyone's gone. Looks like they left in a hurry and had one hell of a fight. Feral corpses everywhere. Emma and I searched for anything that might tell us where they went. The only thing we found was Anthony. <laughs> Must have been bad. They never would have left his body there. I sent Emma down to the loading dock to wait for me while I check on something. We won't stay long. I just want to get Anthony's body and wait. Arrows. Fuck me. So there we go. So Josh was one of the Minutemen and they had it really hard in here because they kind of got ambushed by the ghouls. And he sent one of the other survivors, Emma, downstairs. So uh, let's finish up this story by heading right there, right now. So, downstairs in the garage, there's a bit more, I think, is there another ghoul over here? He's dead. And I can't hit that one because he's on an elevated... So now I will be able to hit him, there we go. And there he goes as well. Ooh, bottle caps, ammo and pre-war money. I could take everything off his hands. And another military great duct tape, oh my god, it's Christmas. And then we have, sadly, Emma right here as well. So let's take her holotape and listen to that while we uh, clear out the rest of this area. What the hell is Josh doing? He's been gone for over an hour. We need to get out of here. The guys are thinking we're already at Concord. If Josh would hurry his ass up, maybe we can get there in time. Shit, gunfire. Not good. Josh! And there's the uh, the end of Emma as well. So uh, sadly, both of them died right here, right next to Anthony, the guy we found in the cafeteria. And that's kind of the story of the Minutemen in um, Lexington over here. So um, next up on that storyline is Quincy, but we won't be uh, seeing that for a while. So uh, let's just open this up and get out of here. There we go. And that's, this kind of makes it clear why they headed to uh, Concord eventually, because the route from here is pretty straightforward. Just uh, heading north and you kind of get uh, get right over there. So uh, that's, that's, that's the story of the Minutemen in Lexington. So let's keep going. And as I say, Lex, let's keep going. I stumble across um, a lot of traps and a machine gun turret. Which should be definitely hiding, well, protecting something. And I, I, it sounds like there's somebody cooking over here. The machine gun turret is definitely hostile, so that's just... No! There goes the turret. Oh, and there's Raider Scum. Okay, what am I doing? Uh, do I, am I hitting him from a distance? Oh, I'm still in danger. Still in danger. Oh god. Where the hell am I? Oh, there's another turret over there. There we go. Where's... Where is she? Oh god, zero... Wait, what? Zero chances to hit? There we go. Yeah, keep going. Woo, that was half my health. They all have submachine guns lately, that is ridiculous. But uh, nothing some, oh, there goes the submachine gun. Nothing some grilled rad roach won't fix. Luckily there were only two of them. 
and an expert safe. Maybe one of those guys had the key on them. No key on either of them, so let's just keep going. There's this really weird floating ghoul over here in the streets. I'm just gonna ignore him for now, but yeah, thank you for all that. <laughs> Do want to be careful. So now we're on the, the east side of Corvega. So a side we haven't really explored yet. But usually in this bus station, I've often seen machines spawn. Machine enemies, so let's be really, really careful here. I keep hearing gunfire. The bus station was a bust, but there's definitely people fighting. What is this? So it seems like people with laser rifles versus scavengers. Oh, okay. Fire support starts as well. Okay, that's good. We'll do that in a second. So scavengers versus... I can't see what they're fighting, actually. These guys are usually hostile towards me as well, so gotta be really careful here. Because I'm wide open and there's not a lot of cover here. So let's just... Ooh, they're actually really high level. But I think with a sneak attack... What just happened? Oh! I was detected, but not... Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Sneaking. Can't hit him twice. There we go. So we need to be careful. There's somebody... Running? Oh, that's the guy upstairs. Just be careful. So is that everybody then? No, there's somebody outside there as well. Guess not. Jesus! Woman! There we go. That's another sneak attack. These guys actually have a bit of... I mean, the other guys actually had a bit of loot on them. I think she just goes left to right. So in a second, I'm gonna... When she turns around, I'm just gonna sneak up on her and whack her in the back. She keeps looking at me for some reason, so she knows I'm here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, she was already... Yeah, she was fighting the other people, so she's already half health. Quick light pipe pistol, don't really care about that. Who were you fighting? Radus. Just simple Radus. No legendaries by any chance? Probably no, okay. So that leaves me the one I killed over here. And the one inside also very basic loot, yeah. Nothing to write home about. So nothing that interesting, but we did get a quest that popped up. Fire support. So there's a, a radio frequency now that uh, just states that there's a few people that are in dire need. And that's where this next town comes in. We're gonna head slowly into there because it's a pretty dangerous area. Seems like there's a few raiders over there. I might actually just try a grenade. I'm just gonna check that it's actually... Uh, oh, it's a ghoul. There's multiple ghouls. There we go. And then I see another frag mine on the left there. There we go. And I hear gunfire already, so that's the people we need to help out. But we didn't need to get to them first. There's another mine underneath the car, which I think I'm going to make use of. So that's going to make the car explode and hopefully... I don't think that took any of the ghouls with it. <laughs> it was a nice explosion though. Holy shit, there's a lot of ghouls. Well, there's one on fire now. There's a few on fire now. Um, well, that's one. Just wasting my molotovs now. I shouldn't, shouldn't be doing this. Um, but it looks like there's a lot of ghouls inside, inside of that area. So I'm just going to try one more time. Right over there. That still didn't kill anything. <laughs> so that one's really determined to get to us. There we go. Just attack him faster, please. That's another one down. 
Can I, can I please get out of here? Yeah, so College Square discovered. Oh god, oh god. There we go. And then this one is limping towards me because I must have crippled. Ow! Must have crippled a leg, but that didn't stop him from hitting me in the face. Oh god. So yeah, they're, they're really, really mad. Can't really hit the other one yet, so... And there we go. Slow but steady. I do love how random the loot is on ghouls. Just whatever they could find they picked up and yeah, just carried around. Because some of them, yeah, just got in the yarn. Bottle caps and a silver pocket watch. Something exploded over there. So the gunfire is getting stronger and the presence of ghouls is as well. So let's uh I, yeah, let's just take the coffee cup as well. Um so let's there's a lot of dead people over here. Let's head into the police station, the Cambridge police station. So there's a lot of people here trying to fight off another ghoul attack. There we go, let's help them out with the rumor. What are they firing at? Stop, stop, stop. They're, they're all dead. You're firing at a bunch of corpses. Oh god. Hi. Idiot savant. There's something in my back, thank you. Oh, they're all, they're all attacking me now. An idiot savant is having fun. Okay, yeah, the rats, the rats are really annoying. Was that it? Nope. There's another roamer over there. I'm just gonna... Because Dance, you almost hit me there. And then another roamer. And that, ooh, popped his head off. Oh, what, 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 what am I doing? Oh, that's gonna explode. I'm gonna just stay back. Because I think the truck is gonna explode. Yeah, it's definitely on fire. I just wanna... Ooh, they, they lost their arms. And whack. Whack. Ooh, there goes the truck. Ow. Ow. There was more. There was more. I think I have one hit left. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, assist the soldier. Speak to Paladin Dance. I think he's gonna do that automatically, but just wanna just wanna quickly take a look around. So yeah, hello Paladin Dance. Glad I could be of assistance. We appreciate the assistance, civilian. What's your business here? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to survive, sir. I'm just trying to survive out here, like everyone else. The way you charged in and engaged those ferals, I find that a bit difficult to believe. Are you from a local settlement? I love how he said you charged in, because yeah, we kind of charged in with a freaking baseball bat in our hands. I do find Bob's face really funny, because he's always looking like he has... He, someone just told him a very funny joke. Um, we came from Sanctuary Hills. I'm from Sanctuary Hills, on the other side of Concord. I've seen the location on our maps, but I've never visited the area myself. If you want to continue pitching in, we could use an extra gun on our side. Well, Bob is always happy to help, so... Um, um, did he actually introduce himself? I'm Paladin Dance, Brotherhood of Steel. There we go, that's an introduction. I'm Halen and Knight Reese. We're on recon duty. But I'm down a man and our supplies are running low. Our target is ArcJet Systems, and it contains the technology we need. The deep range transmitter. We infiltrate the facility, secure the transmitter, and bring it back here. So what do you say? You willing to lend the Brotherhood of Steel a hand? Well, Bob is always happy to help, although he looks kind of suspicious right now. Just after I did that whole monologue about him looking happy all the time. Um, although there is a sarcastic option. It's a good plan, if we make it back. I can assure you that I wouldn't undertake this mission unless I had confidence in your abilities. Okay. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't say yes, though. All right, civilian. It's time to prove your worth. Head into Stop. the police hey. station and resupply yourself. Then let me know when you're ready to begin. 
Let's move out. The name is Bob, not civilian. I don't know who this civilian guy is you keep talking about, but I'm Bob. And we leveled up again. Luckily, we didn't get uh, an idiot savant prompt this time, so that's good. I'm just going to pick up the ammo around here. Thank you very much. And then call to arms started. So uh, speak to Paladin Dance to go to Arcjet Systems, which is, yeah, it's a pretty nice quest. We're going to do that in a second. But uh, let's do some inventory management first. So you're going to patch me up or what? I don't know. Your prognosis looks pretty grim. Might be more humane to just take you out back and shoot you. <laughs> you're all hard, Doc. Just quit squirming so I can get these bandages on. So I love this little conversation between uh, Halen and uh, Reese because in a second we're going to see that Reese is actually kind of a dick towards us. But uh, this little conversation made it clear that they kind of do have some sort of relationship between them. So uh, why so nice? Why are you cutting me so much slack? I uh, I joined the Brotherhood not too long ago. I used to be like you, wandering alone. Dance is a good man. He's just all soldier. Protocol is his bread and butter. And Reese? Well, let's just say he's as hard-headed as a Mr. Gutsy. But you know what? I trust both of them with my life. Because they're good people. And that's hard to come by nowadays. I would say that of all the robots, the Mr. Gutsy is the least hard-headed. Because all, all the other robots have a really, really tough outer shell. And the Mr. Cutsy doesn't really have that, but yeah, that's besides the point. So the police station is a really good place to start looting, but I do uh, am starting to run out of inventory space. So I'm gonna pick up what I can, head back to Sanctuary Hills, and then come back here to check the rest out. Funnily enough, the Cambridge police station is actually a really, really good source of um, power armor related uh, resources which is really nice and then we also have the uh, operation winter's end holotape over here which will uh, come in handy later on i'm not gonna play it just yet i'm just gonna take it so there we go police station ransacked i'm starting to feel like i know why reese doesn't really like us but let's go talk to dance yeah. you ready to move out yes we are ready outstanding follow me and try not to lag behind i'm carrying a baseball bat I do love that animation, he, him just tossing the helmet up. I have this! So this is gonna be the road towards Arcjet Systems, because it's that building. I don't think we can actually see it already. Yeah, to the west. We take this road, we should be able to avoid the larger packs of ferals infesting Cambridge. Traveling this far from the police station is a risk. But getting that transmitter up and running needs to be our top priority. If it was up to me, I'd relocate my team. But Scribe Halen detected some disturbing energy readings in the area that need to be investigated. We don't know much about them. The systems are short-lived and broadcast on a frequency only attainable with a high level of technology. We're concerned that whoever or whatever is creating those energy readings might be a potential threat. So it's our job to investigate. So there we go. Mysterious signals that need investigating and that's why we're gonna go for that... Uh that special transmitter. There's a bunch of raiders over there, so I'm gonna let Dance go ahead. Because I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna fare that well against those guys. I'm just gonna get some explosives over here. I think if Dance stays back a bit, might be able to just... There we go, Molotov incoming. Ooh, yeah, they died. Is there one alive? I don't think so. Did they just kill a merchant? Damn it, they killed a merchant. Uh, so yeah, there was another team that was sent to the Commonwealth, uh, but they haven't heard from them since. From them since. So uh, that's worrying. Uh, we also leveled up, as the game just uh, kindly let me know right now. So um, I'm gonna check that out as well while we're going uh, to our chat. So level 11, um, Idiot Savant is, um, well, unlocked at level 11, but I kind of feel like it's broken enough with times 3, I don't want to change it to times 5, because uh, it eventually goes to, yeah, times 5 is the best, well, the, the biggest change, because it adds another uh, multiplier to it, but yeah, I'm not going to do that, so... Uh, 
Unless there's anything else that's of interest, I think I'm gonna just dump another point into charisma. Or even intelligence, because I do want to work my way towards science, which is at intelligence 6. Getting more tanky will be more important, so let's just put one point into charisma and we can take Lone Wonder next then. There we go. Oh god. Float flies. Hmm, I'm just gonna take the meat then, Dance, if you're okay with that. And then, of course, because of... Uh, ooh, this one didn't have double meat. So usually they always have double meat since we found that uh, that Wasteland Survival Guide. That was weird. But, Arc Jet, it's right over there. Jesus, a pack of wild mutts. Ooh, and I'm not doing a lot against that alpha wild mongrel. Let's just whack the other one. And that's a lot more meat for me. There it is. Arc jet systems. There it is indeed. So we'll head in the front. Arc jet systems. So we're gonna be um, facing some new type of enemies, which we'll uh, see in a second. I'm not gonna spoil just yet. But um, I'm wondering how my melee weapons are gonna stand up against those guys. Uh, I just took a melon. I just took a melon for no reason. There seems to be empty bottles. Yeah, okay. Let's just head in with uh, with Dance. So, knowing Dance, I don't think Stealth will help me much here, because uh, he's gonna, just gonna... This this flippin' idiot is just gonna charge His into everything. Like this, with the last nail in the coffin for mankind. They exploited technology for their own gains, pocketing the cash and ignoring the damage they've done. Says the guy in power armor. Uh, yeah, okay, he kind of skipped that dialogue there. So yeah, the security, the protectrons are all destroyed, so um, I see that. I see that. Damn it, I was hoping to avoid this. Look at the evidence. There isn't a single spent ammunition casing or drop of blood in sight. These robots were assaulted by Institute Synths. There we go, so Institute Synths will be on the lookout for those. Oh, we'll look out. Roger that. Let's move out. So technically, since don't uh, register as being robots, which might actually work in our advantage since, yeah, we don't need to hit them that hard. I also can't loot any, oh, barely any of the protectrons since they're really destroyed to hell. Because yeah, for example, this one I can't really loot. And then there's a terminal. I think I can actually check out, or maybe not, let's just check. So most of the emails on this terminal just talk about the automated security and that the personnel had to carry spe specific badges to avoid getting shot by the automated security. And the last one is more interesting. Sam, what the hell is going on down there? How did a member of the press get all the way past security through the entire research facility and into the engine core without tripping our alarms or turrets? We have a real mess on our hands and it's going to be your job to clean it up. I don't care how you do it, just make it all go away. If this comes back to bite us, I swear you're going to be the one that takes the fall. So something happens with a member of the press and then protect and control. I think we can't even activate anyone because yeah, they're all, they're all destroyed. See if you can find a way to get that door open. I'm gonna reconnoiter the area. I will then, so I'll just check out reconnoiter. So uh, do some reconnaissance is what he's wanting to say. And we have a lab analyst's terminal. We have the lab control terminal, which I can't unlock right now because it's too complicated for BioBob. But we have a discarded arc jet work lock. Let's play that while we uh, check out the rest of the Why area. Why the heck are they making us record this? Oh crap, it's on, isn't it? <laughs> um, this is Technician Rand, arc jet propulsion division. I'm here with Technician Janowski, work log A1190. Janowski and I have been working on the Mars Shot Project for about three months now, and I think we have the thrust calculations worked out. Man, I wish I was headed up there with those guys. It'd be nice to get the hell away from our lousy planet. Hey, easy. If we don't record these logs properly, we're gonna get fired. The supervisor is already itching to get rid of us, especially since it's taking us longer than we promised. So what? We've been drafted anyway. We're shipping out in a few weeks, remember? <sighs> Soon we'll be doing push-ups, eating freeze-dried rations, and just wishing we were spending our day inside a cushy private laboratory. Of course I remember. But I'm trying not to imagine getting my head blown off when I'm on the front line, and keeping my mind on work is helping me deal with the problem. 
Maybe that doesn't make sense to you, but it's important to me, okay? All right. I'm sorry. Look, why don't you toss this tape, and we'll start a new one. So there we go. Janowski and Rand talking about the work at ArcChat Systems, which is now clear that they're making... Uh, Trusty engines for uh, space travel. So let's check out this terminal first because we can't really check out that one since it's locked. So there we go, we get the password from this first terminal, nothing else on there, just about a, a bit of text about the, how the passwords were distributed. And then we can uh, check out the lab controls which are unable to, uh, well we can check those right now. And now we have the security door, so let's open that up. There we go. Uh, we have sense right there. Let's blow them up immediately. Ow. Just gonna swap over to fragmentation grenades. Oh, nope. The other sense. Okay, fuck it. Okay, that kind of hurt a lot. I'm just gonna let dance do all the work. So these are carrying shock batons. So uh, those are uh, upgraded uh, security batons, which are really, really nice. They have a bit more uh, energy uh, damage on there. So yeah, Dance is taking care of every single synth in the building while I'm healing up a bit. And uh, yeah, because, oh god, I'm just gonna... Toss a grenade in there. Oh, there's one here. Let's just keep hitting this guy, because he's... Uh... Oh yeah, I disarmed him. There we go. Let's just get back in the hole, because I feel like the hole is really, really safe over here. Let's toss another grenade up there. There we go. And I think... I feel like there's still one left. I think I might have also blown up Dance a few times in that fight. Okay, seems to be fine. Something I also like about Fallout is the fact that you can actually pick up guns from your uh, opponents. And if you then toss away that gun, you keep the ammunition that was inside of the gun uh, before that. So I'm going to toss away all the Institute pistols that I've uh, taken so far. But I'm going to keep the ammo inside because of course I can sell that really, really easily. And it doesn't weigh anything on this difficulty. So just to take a look at the shock batons. So they do 27 damage and 17 energy damage, which takes that up to 44. Which is not that bad, um, if we compare it to other medium weapon, it's 47. Uh, Big Jim is still a bit more powerful, which means I'm gonna just keep it at that as well and just drop the shock batons. So we're heading deeper with Dance and we're uh, passing a Tesla Science. Energy weapons permanently inflict plus 5% critical damage. We're not gonna use energy weapons, but it's fun to have that either way. We're also right next to the CEO's terminal. I'm gonna just let Dance take care of the turret because he's doing that really, really well. And let's check out the terminal first. So it talks about a new project for ArcJet, the Mars shot project for the government that uh, eventually stopped uh, actually being financed by the government. So uh, they're telling me they may have to delay a year or more depending on what happens. If that's true, we'll just have to make do with the proceeds from the deep range transmitter contract, which we've already completed. I'm trying to keep everyone's spirits up around here, but it's getting harder and harder with the world falling apart around us. So yeah, there we go. The Marshall project kind of fell without a, a supplier anymore. So without the a contract anymore which why which is why this uh, place was eventually shut down but they did manage to make the deep range transmitter we're looking for so that is good completed provide fire support for paladin dance well we've never fired a gun and we weren't really supportive either so uh, but yeah we're, we're glad we're glad we could help and there's a pair of skeleton hands right next to a piece of soap in the sink here that is that is again yeah Bethesda, Bethesda and skeletons really really weird people sometimes and that means we can actually just head deeper down. Uh, ooh, another cherry. We loop back down to the entrance and there's a receptionist terminal. So let's check that out. So just an introduction to why the press was here for the Mars shot project. And there's a, a floor safe installed here, apparently. Oh yeah, there it is. It is advanced, which is weird. Because you would think that the terminal would be able to open that... But it doesn't seem... Let me know if you have any issues with the save or the locking mechanism. Yeah, we do. 
That's not helping us. Yeah, no safe for us, so let's keep going down. Okay, the engine core. Here we go. Watch your footing. Looks like the power's out in this section. Yeah, not entirely, but I kind of agree with uh, your statement there. So let's head down. So this is the... Uh, that's why the epic music is playing right now. This is the Mars Shot Project. Indeed, because this is a very, very nice engine right here. We'll have to keep heading down for now and find a way to get the facility's power back online. There has to be a power backup system somewhere. Scout the maintenance area off of the main chamber. I'll remain... Bob is on the job. We'll do just that dance. We'll check out the area over here. There's a junk jet here, which is um, a gun that can shoot any kind of junk you want it to fire. But again, it's something where you pull the trigger and something... Uh, flies out of the other end so that's a gun for us and Bob doesn't know how to deal with that and he's just gonna hit it there we go um, but the other thing we have here is the technician's personal log so let's play that Jeering, leering, laughing, mocking, taunting. oh he graduated all right from high school it's fine I'm sure he took shop class oh look he's reading the science mags how cute Har har har. Shot. Let's see them make this in shot class. My marvel of engineering. The finest in weaponized refuse acceleration. My beauty. My junk jet. They'll see. The engineers with their suits and fancy degrees. Come Monday morning, they'll all see. So there we go, the engineer that created the junk jet, which is, uh, he sounded a bit like a lunatic, but uh, let's just look at this terminal, facilities terminal. Alert, the engine core is operating on emergency power to conserve energy, all non-critical systems and operations have been suspended, but we have options to start the auxiliary generators. There we go, there we go, engine core power restored. But now... Dance is being attacked by a bunch of synths. He can hold his own, but uh, there's actually something you can do to help out a bit. If you press this shiny red button, you can actually start the engine. So the door behind Dance is gonna close. I think. Isn't it supposed to? Oh god. Let's push this button quickly. Whew. I forgot to close the door there for a second. Because I think that actually um, fires us as well in that case. And fire engine! Bob likes a good barbecue. And there goes everything. And Dance goes on his knees, but he's protected by his power armor somehow. And he actually, he's just fine. He survives that. Which is which is nice, and that opens Test up again. Completed with an efficiency rating of ninety-six point seven percent. So the uh, Mars shot program was actually a success, and uh, well, Paladin Dance got a bit oh cooked there. Oh my God! In. Are you all right? Got cooked by those flames, but thanks to my power armor, I'm still in one piece. The important thing is that we're still alive. We have a way to get to the transmitter. Indeed, Let's we go. do. Let's go indeed. I'm just gonna loot everything here. There we go, a bunch of pistols on the floor and I got all the ammo out of it. Just to give you an idea of what that gets you, I have now 734 fusion cells, which is really, really nice to be able to sell that later on. So, uh, elevator? Elevator is downstairs, I forgot about that, sorry. Going down. And then of course, going up. I don't need to wait until Dan enters the elevator because he... Uh, do you? No? Yeah, okay. Bye, Dance. Bye. And then we're up. And then suddenly... A man in power armor appears. Did you hear something? Oh, God. I think I'm still... Have frag grenades equipped, so... There we go. Just blowing up a few of those uh, synths. Just gonna keep out of there, because that could actually... Oh, don't get in my way. 
There we go. Mission accomplished oh, indeed. Damn it. I don't see the device anywhere. Fan out and check the synth remains. They may have been after the transmitter as well. Yeah, let's check out the synth remains. Few of them have extra weapons because it was blown off the other synths. And I think there's supposed to be one here that actually has the deep transmitter. Oh, the synth I first blew up actually has it. So uh, there we go. And a nice steamer trunk with a lot of, ooh, pipe pipe. I don't care about the pipe though. Um, and that's it for arc jet systems, which is really, really nice. I'm just going to drop all the guns again. There we go. And let's follow, I don't, I'm not going to follow dance actually, because we just need to take this elevator and he doesn't seem to be inclined to follow that elevator. Oh, and he just appears inside of the elevator. Hello dance. Somebody should really do something about the lighting over here. And there we go. Oh, what what the fuck? You're a teleporting master, Dance. Jesus. The bunker looks clear. Let's move out. The bunker looks clear. So that means that Arcjet Systems is completed. And we're gonna get a bit of a reward that we'll never be able to use. But Bio Bob's biggest reward is reward is right over here, because he got Two bottles of vodka. There we go. That's going to be very nice. Actually, Dance, I'm going to drink one right now. One vodka coming up. So strength plus one, intelligence minus one. There we go. Vodka in the man. Hello, Dance. Let's talk to him drunk. Hello. Well, that could have gone smoother, <laughs> but mission accomplished. I love it. I love the way the characters talk when they're drunk. Because now you can see in the bottom right, there's an icon to say that I'm... Uh, inebriated so uh that that's that <laughs> as a team well as a team agreed it's a refreshing change to work with a civilian who can follow orders properly that oh both said, can follow orders really all right two important matters to discuss first and foremost if you'll hand me the deep range transmitter i'd like to compensate you for your assistance during this operation i think you'll find this weapon useful it's my own personal modification of the standard brotherhood laser rifle May it serve you well in battle. A what? A, a rifle? Righteous authority. So this is an amazing gun. Um, so in any other playthrough, I would have gladly accepted this and used this for a whole long while. Because you can do a lot with this thing. So critical shots do double damage and the critical meter fills 15% faster so criticals already do a multiplied amount of damage so you can double that again with this weapon um but yeah of course bob doesn't know what a gun is he doesn't know how this works and he doesn't want to have anything to do with this so uh yeah we're gonna take it but that's about it um don't you need don't it you need to keep it this isn't the only weapon at my disposal brotherhood soldiers always carry a backup now as far as the second matter goes i wanted to make you a proposal we had a lot thrown at us back there our op could have ended in disaster, but you kept your cool and handled it like a soldier. There's no doubt in my mind that you've got what it takes. The way I see it, you've got a choice. You could spend the rest of your life wandering from place to place, trading an extra hand for a meager reward. Or, you could join the Brotherhood of Steel and make your mark on the world. So, what do you say? If it gets me one of those fancy armors you guys are wearing, I... Definitely agree. To join. That's what I wanted to hear. Meet me back at the. Sorry, I'm drunk. We'll discuss the details. I think I'm wobbling a bit. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of wobbly right now. But there we go. Call to arms completed. We didn't get an idiot savant prompt, which is fine by me because we've been leveling up way too fast lately. Semper Invicta return to Cambridge Police Station. We'll do that uh, next time because uh, I think that's well. Plenty for this episode. We've done we've done a lot. We did um, the Super Duper Mart, uh, most of Lexington, and then the Cambridge Police Station and Arc Jet Systems, which is uh, a lot for a day's work. So uh, Bob, uh, well, he kind of took a vodka already, so he kind of got the got the break already. But uh, yeah, he's gonna take a little break. I'm gonna take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. When we get back, we're gonna continue making our way towards Diamond City and uh, the rest of the Commonwealth. So. Uh, here we come, Bob and everybody else. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And uh, 
I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.